Welcome to a series of two instructionals where we will discuss the construction of shadows on our orthographic and paraline drawings. When working in 3D using CAD modeling software, generating accurate shadow representations is effortless. When working with even simple modeling tools such as SketchUp, there should be no excuse to not to fully understand how daylighting and shading will work with your designs. In most instances, we can also create contextual renderings of shadows for specific orthographic views, such as elevations and sections, in most CAD software. Having said this, it is worth getting an appreciation of the art of projecting shadows, known as scarigraphy. The use of CAD in design development has more or less relegated the techniques of scarigraphy to history. However, there is a difference in approach between CAD-generated shadows and scarigraphy. Scarigraphy techniques were used in particular to show modelling of a facade. Scarigraphy tended to follow conventions in relation to the vertical and horizontal shadow angles so that we could read the degree of modelling in a facade and compare it to another facade that had a shadow projection constructed using the same technique and parameters. In this hypothetical ex example of a masonry facade with a window, door and a hood over the top without any treatment from CAD or constructed shadows, the facade looks flat and featureless. When we construct shadows on the view, the profile of the facade comes to life. The construction of the shadows in this case follows a simple rule of projection in that the vertical shadow angle is set at 45 degrees and the horizontal shadow angle is also set at 45 degrees. Through the principles of orthographic projection, one is able to construct the shadow on the facade by mapping the intersection of the shadow angles projected from the plan and the section. Returning to our elevation view of our cube stack, given that the convention we have followed is to use a singular line style without any variation in thickness and not deploying any hidden detail, the elevations look quite flat and featureless. For the exercise, we will add shadows to the elevations. In most instances, the shadows on the stack cube elevation should be quite simple. Starting with the layered cube, I have aligned the plan view over the top of the elevation to see how a simple shadow projection of 45 degrees would register on the elevation. I haven't included the vertical shadow angle in this instance simply because there is another cube stacked on top of it and so the vertical shadow angle will have very little effect. Given the alignment and the geometry of my cubes, in this instance all the inside relief of the cubes is in shadow so I would render the inside area or relief areas of the cube with a simple block fill. The process of constructing the shadow on the stick cube will require constructing the shadow using the plan and section as a guide. Aligning the plan and the section to the elevation as shown, we start by assuming a vertical and horizontal shadow angle. In this instance, we will use 45 degrees as the horizontal and vertical shadow angle, and for the plan view, the light will be coming from the left and moving to the right. The aim is to find on the elevation what parts will be in shadow. With the elevation in the current slide, we note that the only part that will be affected by the shadow are the sticks that are on the inside face of the cube. Starting with the plan, we project a shadow angle of 45 degrees from the corner post of the cube and see where it intersects with the cross stick and then we project that down onto the elevation. We do a similar thing with the section. In this instance, the stick in question will be in full light. However, it will be affected by the shadow cast by the vertical element in the plan. If we repeat the same process with the other elevation, the result is, is that the upper cross stick will be in total shadow as the shadow is cast by the perimeter stick overhead. Bringing these shadow projections together, we get a bit more modelling as per the rules of scarigraphy, but it is still a slightly perplexing view and it needs to be read in combination with the plans and the section to fully understand how the object comes together in three dimensions.